Damn, we look like a before and after commercial. <laughs> Hi, thanks to this incredible implant, you can become Tom Cruise. <laughs> damn, damn, the boy's pretty. I love you. And a damn good actor, too. Congratulations, man. When audiences think of Tom Cruise, their mind instantly goes to Mission Impossible or Top Gun. Or maybe they think of his commitment to doing his stunts and upping the ante with each action film he does. For others, they think of his work with notable directors such as Paul Thomas Anderson, Martin Scorsese, Steven Spielberg, and Stanley Kubrick. Part of what makes Cruz one of the greatest movie stars is the wide range of instant reactions to his name. Tom Cruise's map other and fourth has evolved from the teen heartthrob to one of Hollywood's most powerful and polarizing figures. I remember seeing Annie Hall and uh, Spartacus, Lawrence of Arabia, and uh, I always wanted to, to be those people or live the life that they had. And... Having just turned 60, Cruise is still one of the leading names in Hollywood. A prolific actor with a career spanning over 40 years, he is continually building a giant legacy within the film industry. He is undoubtedly one of the greatest action film stars with a hugely loyal fan base. Now, I remember when I first came to London back in... <laughs> wow! <laughs> but over the decades, he has also developed a talent for producing the films he stars in, along with a few other movies where he's not the name above the title. His power as a producer is his steadfast aversion to shrinking theatrical windows for any of his projects. You know, I used to work jobs just to buy tickets so I could go to the movies, and I remember thinking, geez, I'd really like to, I'd love to make movies, and, and so I think that's pretty amazing. I, I never thought that this would happen, and I remember making my first movie and, and just loving it so much and wanting to do it for the rest of my life. When you say movie star in 2023, a select group of actors come to mind. Tom Hanks, Brad Pitt, Meryl Streep, Leonardo DiCaprio, Samuel L. Jackson, Scarlett Johansson, and The Rock, to name a few. But many fewer have been leading films for five decades and are still setting box office records. Movie stars feel fleeting, and given how the most famous actors tend to be in superhero franchises, it is impressive how Cruz has remained a movie star over the last few decades, while not appearing in a superhero film. One of the highest earning actors, Top Gun's sequel brought him to new heights, released over three decades after its predecessor. It passed over $1.37 billion at the global box office in August 2022. Cruz's 2022 earnings accumulate to a whopping $100 million, making him the highest paid actor of the year. Not bad for a 60-year-old action hero. I mean, Tom loves making movies. He really loves entertaining audiences, and, and it shows. Were there any points on set where somebody came to the catering table and went, oh my god, I think I've just broken Tom Cruise? <laughs> like I say, that guy was me. Tom Cruise nearly broke me twice. He has managed to adapt and mold himself over the years, bringing new life to his work, only propelling viewers' interest in him. Cruz was not born into this world either. He has gone from rags to riches, carving out an incredible legacy for himself. His ability seems to know no limits. Thomas Cruz Mapother the Fourth was born in July 1962 in Syracuse, New York. His parents, both from Louisville, Kentucky, had English, German, and Irish ancestry. The only boy, Tom grew up with three sisters, Leanne, Marion, and Cass, in a religious household. Leanne has become Cruz's publicist, and his cousin, William Mapother, also went into acting in the 80s, 
starring alongside Cruise in several films, including Mission Impossible 2, Magnolia, and Vanilla Sky. Cruise, an intelligent and capable young boy, was very frustrated with his difficulties until at age seven, he was diagnosed with dyslexia. In 1971, when Cruz was just nine, his father accepted a job as a defense consultant with the Canadian Armed Forces. He experienced a lot of instability from a young age. In fact, over the years, Tom would attend 15 different schools in 14 years. His family was constantly moving due to their low income, which meant that Tom was often bullied. He said that he had no really close friends, was always the new kid with the wrong shoes, the wrong accent. Although Tom is close to his family, he had a complicated relationship with his father, Thomas Cruz Mapother III. After his parents' divorce in 1974, Cruz didn't see his father for a decade. Reuniting when his father was dying of cancer, he would only meet Tom on the basis that he wouldn't ask him anything about the past. Tom described him as a bully and a coward, the kind of person where, if something goes wrong, they kick you. It was a great lesson in my life, how he'd lull you in, make you feel safe, and then, bang. He said that when he saw him in his final moments, he thought, wow, what a lonely life. He was in his late 40s. It was sad. Cruz grew up in a strong Catholic family and even took a Catholic church scholarship to St. Francis Seminary in Cincinnati, Ohio, aspiring to become a Franciscan priest. However, his path swiftly changed when he was expelled for drinking. In high school, he played football as a linebacker, but was also cut from the team after he was caught drinking beer before the game. Fortunately for us, however, this is how he found acting. Starring in a school production of Guys and Dolls, he developed a strong interest in the art. Once he graduated from school, he decided to pursue his love of acting, moving straight to New York at 18 and working as a busboy. He signed with Creative Arts Agency in 1980, based in LA, and kick-started his acting career. I lit a whole pile of newspapers. You ever try to light a whole pile of wet newspapers? Jeez, it smokes like crazy. Cruz landed his first role in the film Endless Love in 81, followed by several other films, including a leading role in All the Right Moves, an American sports drama directed by Michael Chapman. However, in 1983, he took on his significant breakout role in the teen comedy drama, Risky Business, acting in one of the most beloved scenes of his career. He went on to act in hugely popular films Cocktail, The Color of Money, and Rain Man, a film co-star Dustin Hoffman and Cruz were convinced would flop. Hoffman even tried to leave the production three weeks into shooting. Nominee for Best Performance by an Actor in a Leading Role for Rain Man, Dustin Hoffman. Fortunately for them, it received a leading eight nominations at the 61st Academy Awards, winning four Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor for Hoffman, and Best Original Screenplay. The release of 1986's Top Gun cemented the superstar's status. It was the highest grossing film of that year, in which he played a Navy jet pilot. Cruz topped the decade off in 1989, portraying real-life paralyzed Vietnam War veteran Ron Kovic in the film Born on the Fourth of July, leading to several awards, including his first Best Actor Academy Award nomination. I went to uh, 
a rehabilitation center and I uh, talked with the doctors beforehand. And I met with uh, a man who was uh, quadriplegic. And, uh, you know, we were talking and he had this incredible spirit. You know, he was joking and laughing and, you know, just, he had just happened about a year ago and he just talked about the hard times, but also he's just glad to be alive and just, uh, you know, it is more difficult and his life has changed, but he's, he's just, he's, he's going for it. Tom had married Mimi Rogers in 1987, kickstarting one of many actresses he's been known to date. Divorcing three years later and supposedly finalizing their divorce just two weeks before meeting his second wife-to-be and well-known actress Nicole Kidman. They were one of the 90s hottest and most celebrated couples. The pair were introduced on the set of Days of Thunder, 1990 American sports action drama. No halos around objects, flashing lights. Now, uh, what are you, you going to do with this? Look into your eyes. Playing on-screen lovers seeped from the screen into their personal lives, and they were married later that year. Nicole and Tom went on to adopt their first child, Isabella Jane, and then a son called Connor Anthony, now 30 and 28. The couple then starred in a second film, Far and Away, in 1992, with Kidman playing his love interest again. She goes into the confession box. She'll never come out, the little tramp. Grace isn't a tramp. She's a dancer in the birdie queue. That isn't dancing. That's kicking her knickers up. Cruz went on to exhibit a broad range of characters in his films during the 1990s, playing such diverse roles as a Navy lawyer in A Few Good Men, 1992, a vampire in Interview with a Vampire, 1994, and a secret agent in Mission Impossible, 1996. The immense popularity of the latter film led to sequels in 2000, 2006, 2011, 2015, and 2018. Taking on one of his most recognizable roles as Ethan Hunt in Brian De Palma's reboot of Mission Impossible, the first film Tom produced alongside Paula Wagner. The pair had set up their own production company in 1992, Cruz Wagner Productions, after Paula Wagner had already worked with Cruz for 11 years as his agent. I was talking with Paula one day, and we were like a few weeks away from shooting, and I, yeah, it just dawned on me. I said, you know, this is actually the biggest movie I've ever been involved in, in terms of production. Um, so I, you know, that, I didn't realize how big the picture was going to be when I said, oh, let's, let's make a movie about Mission, you know, Mission, let's, Mission Impossible, let's go make that movie. And, and uh, all of a sudden we have all, you know, these huge action sequences and uh, traveling from the locations uh, that we had. And it, it was, you know, it was an adventure making this picture, that's for sure. I, I, I must say, I, I enjoyed it. It was a lot of pressure, but uh, it's strange, but I, I kind of enjoy that. They said that um, you're the woman responsible for finding, for discovering Tom Cruise. Is that is that true? Well, I of sorts. He's uh, he's really always made his own decisions. We've been in essence, we've been partners prior to starting our production company. Uh, we worked together. I was his agent, and uh, he's always been a fantastic actor. When did you realize that he sort of had what it takes? Was it clear from early on that he he had real star potential? Yes, he was always a great actor from the time he did a picture called Taps, and when it, which, was, which was the first film, really, that he did, and uh, you could see that he had amazing talent as an actor, great potential. They aimed to give Cruz more creative freedom and allow him to try other roles, like producing and directing, which he has proved very successful at over the years. Ma'am, I am not going in there. Oh, yeah. Good night. The company has made billions of dollars in box office proceeds, producing the films Lions for Lambs, Vanilla Sky, and Steven Spielberg's War of the Worlds, to name a few. However, it eventually became defunct in 2009. Cruz and Kidman co-starred in their last film together, 
Stanley Kubrick's erotic mystery psychological drama, Eyes Wide Shut, an examination of marital fidelity. It turned out to be the last film Kubrick would direct, as he died before it was officially released. It has been noted as one of the greatest films of the 90s. Tonight, Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman, the stars of his latest film, Eyes Wide Shut, said they were shocked and devastated by his death. Other colleagues from the film world have also been paying tribute. Finishing off 1999, Cruise stepped outside the box, surprising viewers with a performance unlike any we had seen before. Taking a supporting role in the film Magnolia, he played a misogynistic self-help guru. Film critic Peter Travers said Cruz was a revelation, fully deserving of the shower of superlatives coming his way. He seethes with the chaotic energy of a wounded animal. He's devastating. Tame it! Take it on head first with the skills that I will teach you at work and say no! You will not control me, no! You will not take my soul, no! For his performance in Magnolia, he received an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor. In February 2001, Cruz ended a decade-long marriage with Kidman, filing for divorce. Unknown to them both, Nicole was pregnant at the time and later clarified that she had unfortunately gone through an ectopic pregnancy. Nicole also stated how much of a shock Tom's decision to end the marriage was for the actress, something she struggled with for a long time. After your divorce from Tom Cruise in 2001, you did have an amazingly creative streak. You know, you did Moulin Rouge, The Hours, and the others all sort of right after that period. Do you think that that, that, peer, that difficult time unleashed a lot of creativity in you? I mean, I think it was, to be completely honest, I was uh, running from my life at that time. I wasn't able to handle the reality of my life. And as an actor, you have this wonderful thing where you can go and get lost in somebody else's life. The work was um, a great place for me to exist. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and then that culminated in um, winning an Oscar. And that caused an epiphany, which was, I'm actually, this is not the answer. This is actually holding this gold statue in, um, and I was sitting in the Beverly Hills Hotel, and it was all extraordinary, and I was the loneliest I'd ever been. Mm. And that was a very strange thing to have happen and it was a fantastic thing to have happen because I was jolted out of um, this, this um, I suppose, need or desire to say, well, this is what I'm, this is, this is going to heal me. Mm. And it didn't. Cruz starred in several action films in the 2000s, including the science fiction thriller Minority Report, 2002, directed by Steven Spielberg. In 2003, he filmed The Last Samurai, in which he played a disaffected U.S. soldier who aligns himself with a samurai community, and the gritty Los Angeles set Collateral in 2004, in which he took on the role of a stubborn contract killer. He teamed with Spielberg on War of the Worlds the year after, a visually impressive adaptation of the H.G. Wells novel of the same name. Moving swiftly into another famous relationship, Cruz was linked to his Vanilla Sky co-star, Penelope Cruz. The intimacy of playing on-screen lovers trickled over into their real lives, and they continued the relationship for three years. In 2005, Cruz started dating Dawson's Creek actress Katie Holmes. Holmes stated that she used to think she'd marry Tom Cruise one day, which ended up not just wishful thinking.
they made their first public appearance in Rome, where Cruz was visiting to collect his David D. Donatello Award for Lifetime Achievement. The following month, Cruz shocked Oprah's viewers when he publicly declared his love for Holmes by jumping up and down on Oprah's couch, proclaiming that he was madly in love, to which Oprah could only say, the boy is gone. Tom, we've never seen you behave this way before. I know. Have you ever felt this way? The pair were inseparable, and Katie stated she was converting to Scientology, Tom's religion. By June 2005, they announced their engagement. By October, the couple was expecting. And in April 2006, they welcomed their first child, Suri, now 16 years old. Later that year, they were married in Italy with a star-studded guest list, including Will Smith, Brooke Shields, The Beckhams, and J.Lo, to name a few. Rome was buzzing with fans and paparazzi, hoping to catch a glimpse of the happy couple and new baby. After six years of marriage, unfortunately, their fairy tale story ended when Katie filed for divorce. A settlement for custody of Suri was decided one month later. Tom has said that he didn't expect that divorce to come. Since his very public breakup, Cruz has kept any relationships he has had under the radar. Cruz subsequently starred in the action thrillers Night and Day in 2010. Hey, dude. It's a beautiful dress. And Jack Reacher in 2012. In the latter, he played a former Army investigator, a role he reprised in Jack Reacher Never Go Back in 2016, appearing as a 1980s rock idol in the musical Rock of Ages 2012. He was then cast in the sci-fi adventure 2013, Oblivion. In 2017, Cruz took on the action horror film The Mummy and the action comedy American Made. Car, I'll get each and every one of you the cat of your troubles. See, I'm gonna walk out of here. <laughs> there ain't a damn thing any one of you can do about it. He's free to go. Oh, well, well, wait a minute. The boy should have taken a cat. Over his long and noteworthy career, Tom Cruise has devoted much of his time and attention to charity and philanthropic endeavors. In 2007, Cruise was honored for his philanthropic actions at a charity gala by Mentor L.A. He became a founding board member for the Hollywood Education Literacy Project, helping students learn how to read and succeed after struggling with dyslexia and learning. Very early on, I was diagnosed as being dyslexic, and, uh, and then I became a Scientologist, and I heard about L. Ron Hubbard's study technology, and I thought, what is this, you know, but I'm dyslexic, and so I, I you know, these are tools that you learn very quickly and start applying to my life, and suddenly, now I'm a commercial pilot. I have, uh, you know, three companies that I run, and I, I, it really opens the door to learning. It is definitely the most satisfying feeling ever, Cruz said because I look at these faces and I see these children and adults come in here and you see them change before your eyes. They're learning how to read, but beyond that, they're getting these tools that are going to forever put them in a position where they know that they can learn anything. His Tropic Thunder co-star, comedian Bill Hader, revealed in 2012 that Cruz had helped him through a panic attack. Tom managed to push two days worth of filming with Bill in 45 minutes so that the actor could get home to his wife and daughter after a bomb scare in their hometown. In 1996, Cruz stopped at a hit and run accident in Santa Monica, California, rescuing aspiring Brazilian actress Heloisa Vinhas. The actor took her to the hospital, ensuring she was okay and paying her medical bills. At the 1996 London premiere of Mission Impossible, Cruz pulled two children out of the way of an onrushing crowd. Then, in the same year, while sailing near Capri, Cruz saved people from a burning sailboat. 
his heroic characters on screen seem embedded in the actor's personality. It's hard not to see Cruz as superhuman through his incredible success, athletic ability, strong work ethic, and kind heart. Tom Cruise loves to entertain his audience, and he sees performing stunts as the gateway to enthralling them. You're unlikely to see a Cruise film without a scene like this. From his younger days, Cruz was always brewing that daredevil spirit that makes him perform stunts, like clinging to an airborne aircraft or running across the tops of tall buildings. Cruz told chat show host Jay Leno, My first motorcycle was a little Yamaha. My mother was away working for the weekend, and I'd stored it in the basement. I didn't tell her I bought it because I didn't want her to panic right away. I was about 10 years old. I was allowed to get whatever my money could buy. Known for his thrill-seeking action scenes, Cruz has been crowned the king of stunts. Wade Eastwood, a stunt coordinator, reported that Cruz stomps his feet and fights for it, meaning that if the studio doesn't let him do a stunt, he won't do the movie. Although he has managed to pull off many dangerous stunts in his lifetime, he has occasionally proved to be human. I did it twice and I was going so hard into the wall because I'm running. You see now the length of the run that I do. It's a full-on sprint all the way and then I jump across the building and we were adjusting things. And the first two takes I hit so hard I bounced off. And I was thinking, and I take a hard hit. So I was thinking, I don't, I don't want to keep doing this stunt. You know, this, there's ones that just, I mean, they just hurt so much. So I'm going, please. So on the next one, I, was, I thought about it. I went over the guys and I, and I was just going to touch my right foot, just touch it, just to slow down a little bit so that I could grab, I could grab the side and then, and then do it. So, so I put my foot there and I just left it there. Just, I mean, that lo that much too long, just like even less than that. And, uh, but I grabbed the side and, and instantly I just, you could see me. If that's the take. I looked down, I, I knew it was broke. I knew I broke, I said, damn it, I broke my ankle. And that's why I just, pulled. it was the first time that I grabbed the side of the building. So I said, I'm just gonna go climb over and run across camera because I knew there's a camera there and I knew the camera's on the side. So I had to get over the wall so that we could retain the shot. Because I knew I'm not, this, we're gonna wrap after this. It's gonna be a little bit of a break. The crew can go on vacation and McHugh and I are gonna work in the editing room and on script for a few months, you know? The studio was forced to halt film production for at least nine weeks to allow Cruz's ankle to heal. costing the studio around $80 million, as the studio had to pay the cast and crew for the eight-week hiatus. I, was, I wasn't actually on the set the day that it happened. I got a text from Chris saying Tom's broken his ankle, and I just thought, oh, good. I mean, I, I mean I'm, glad, I'm glad it's that, not his neck. Because, it, you know, the amount of times we sort of, like, you know, said goodbye to each other on this film, not really knowing if we'd see him again. Uh, it started to get a little bit emotionally wearing. So it was nice to have a breather. Sometimes, for real. I mean, particularly when they did the helicopter stunts. Because there's that, you know, when he did the halo jump, there's a parachute. You can kind of feel okay about that. When he does the, the hanging out of the helicopter, you know he's attached to it somehow, just in case he accidentally lets go. With the helicopters, if they stall, they drop. That's it. So, um, and they had three weeks of it. So, and he was flying the damn thing, you know? So there was a kind of sense of, are we doing the right thing? <laughs> but. Thank goodness we did. During the same scene where he had to jump between buildings, he can be seen performing a hair-raising stunt on Blackfriars Bridge, London. A low-flying helicopter can also be seen nearly touching the roof. reflected on his action-packed career, saying, I am a very physical actor, and I love doing them. I study and train and take a lot of time figuring it all out. I have broken a lot of bones, 
the first time of any stunt is nerve-wracking, but it is also exhilarating. I have been told a few times during shooting a stunt to stop smiling. We had, there's times where we had a mechanical horse where a mechanical horse, Ujio, uh, Hiro Sonata's on a, on a horse and he comes and he hits my horse as it's rearing. It's supposed to, my horse is supposed to fall over with me on top, but he, and he's coming in hard and swinging his sword. Well, he came in and my horse didn't fall. So the sword came very close to my neck at that point. <laughs> but I have, I have great faith and trust in Hiro Sonata, so I knew there would be no problem there. His love for thrill-seeking adventure hasn't plateaued one bit. In the 2011 Mission Impossible film, Ghost Protocol, the world was dumbfounded as Cruz was said to be attempting to climb the Burj Khalifa. Word of mouth spread fast and the stunt paid off, making the film one of the most talked about films at the beginning of the decade. It has been credited for revitalizing interest in the franchise altogether. What my, one of the most memorable times actually is when Tom was doing the, the stunt and I came up to see him doing it. And, um, and came up to the floor and, and just saw all the quiet industry involved in, in keeping him alive as he was gleefully running from side to side <laughs> on this building. And I think it was one of the few times in my adult life that I thought, thank God I'm not Tom Cruise. <laughs> uh, and you know, this, uh, this idea of him climbing the tallest building in the world was, was part of the pitch uh, when I first heard about it. And it sounded great to me, but we kind of thought that it was gonna be more special effects. And, and then when we started talking to the people in Dubai about doing it, um, we realized we could actually film on the real building and get Tom up there. And he was totally psyched for that. There aren't many Hollywood stars that would actually be like, yeah, stick me on a rope, I'm going out. Yeah, well, what they kept saying to me was, uh, once you get above 50 feet, it doesn't really matter how tall you are, you know, it's just you have more time to think about it on the way down. So once Tom had done that experience, I mean, that really is, is one of the best pieces of cinema of this year in itself. Thank you. When he'd done it, what did he come down and explain the experience to you? Um, yeah, I kind of talked to him. I asked him one day, I said, you know, hey, what was that like up there? And, and he describes a lot of things as being fun. And I said, you can't just say it's fun. Come on, tell me what it was. And he stopped for about 20 seconds and he went into this very kind of poetic thing about how quiet it was up there and how uh, strangely at peace he was. And, and, and he loves uh, those kind of challenges um, and likes um, proving to himself that he can do it. So uh, uh, I think that, it, it, you know, the only one who, when, when we finished with that sequence, everybody was very professional, but we were kind of tight. And, and we didn't realize how tight everybody was until we were done. And then everybody was like laughing and, you know, buying each other beers. The only guy who was pissed off was Tom. And it's the only time I saw him grouchy on the whole film. And it was because, you know, he had to come down from the building. He knew he wasn't going back up there. You must have been getting texts from the insurers going, for God's sake, Brad, don't break. Don't. Talk some sense into him. You know, I tried talking to the producer, but that was also Tom. So, you know, didn't get, go anywhere. Several professional climbers, stunt performers, architects, and engineers were consulted before the stunt's filming. Despite being an extremely challenging shoot, director Brad Bird and Cruz completed the stunt safely, with Cruz scaling, running on the side of, hanging onto, and smashing through a window of the iconic Burge. But that's not enough for Tom Cruise. One early morning before filming began, Cruz asked if he could sit at the tower's very top with no safety harness or wires for a quick picture. He was waiting there and holding like this and about two floors below on the deck around the corner were a bunch of tourists and, and they were just out having a day on the Burj Khalifa and they look up and there's Tom Cruise, <laughs> you know? And so they're waving at him. Hey, my Aunt Muriel's here. Would you talk to her, say something? And Tom's trying to be nice, but he's going, can we start the shot? A great example is in the movie Mission Impossible, Rogue Nation where he swims underwater without any breathing equipment. The scene, which was shot in one take, was possible because Cruz was able to hold his breath for six minutes, thanks to the advanced breathing technique taught in the military. On an episode of The Graham Norton Show in 2016, Cruz revealed that experts were brought in to train him to slow down his heart rate so he would require less oxygen. He is quoted as saying, 
There'd be times I'd be sitting there in meetings and I wouldn't breathe. I realized I was not breathing and had to turn my autonomic system back on to breathe again. Cruz is an aerobatic pilot, inducted as part of the Living Legends of Aviation in 2010, receiving the Aviation Inspiration and Patriotism Award from the Kitty Hawk Air Academy. His passion for aviation started at a young age. Growing up in modest economic conditions, Tom's family moved frequently. But once he hung his P-51 Mustang poster in his bedroom, he felt at home. Cruz now owns his very own P-51 Mustang. He flew it recently on the Late Late Show with James Corden. Tom's most well-known aerial sequence in the Mission Impossible franchise led him to get his helicopter license. The film uses very little CGI. One stunt included getting dangerously close to the mountains and the other helicopter in the scene. Cameras were mounted in the chopper to show that he was flying alone. The audiences can tell when something's been cheated. First time we're doing it, gonna work our way in. Make safe, Tom. Come on, I got you, Tom. I'm gonna look down and I'll take it over the waterfalls. I enter it right away. Boo, that's what I want. How was that, McHugh? Uh, very upsetting. I mean, if we, if we do another one, I have no clue what we'll do next. I fear for it. I'd love to do another one, but I'm worried about it. I don't think anyone's gonna stop Tom doing another one. Have you ever tried to say no to Tom Cruise? It's impossible. Even with Cruz's immense success over the decades, he has yet to receive an Oscar. Cruz won the Best Actor honor in 1990 for Born on the Fourth of July, and again in 1997 for Jerry Maguire. Jerry, you better yell! Show me the money! Show me the money! As well as receiving a Best Supporting Actor award in 2000 for Magnolia. His performance has been hailed as Oscar-worthy for Top Gun Maverick. However, it looks like, once again, Cruz will miss out. The snub comes after the actor returned his three Golden Globe statues in 2021 amid the controversy surrounding the show's governing body, Hollywood Foreign Press Association. He was supported by many other actors and companies calling for changes from the organization including Netflix, Amazon Studios, and actor Mark Ruffalo. The HFPA came under fire after an LA Times report detailed that the organization counted zero black journalists among its then 87 members. It is widely known that in a few previous cases, the industry and academy have decided when it's time to reward an actor with a pop culture presence behind them and spend the award season crowning them. Some examples would include Brad Pitt, Will Smith, and Leonardo DiCaprio. At the core, Cruz runs his career as a business, and he knows that he is the product. He molds himself with Hollywood trends so he can steer himself in the right direction, stay relevant, and at the top of his game. Cruz definitely has the filmography and talent to be in the Oscar conversation again. It's about that time of year, and this is a, a film that's being mentioned in the same sentence as Oscars, inevitably. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's quite a compliment. You'd like to win one? Pardon me? You'd like to win one? Oh, no, I would, I would hate to win one. <laughs> It'd be just awful. It would be the worst day of my life. If I was to win an Oscar, I think I would probably die. <laughs> Let's hope none of the judges are watching. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fun. You know, it's a fun thing. You, you know, I don't make movies for awards, and you don't know uh, what's going to happen with stuff like that. When, when people start talking about that, it's always wonderful. You know, it's very exciting. They, like, you know, anyone else, they're just mortal human beings. When they put their head on the pillow at night, they suffer from the same anxieties, the same worries, the same concerns, the same loneliness, the same fears but they tend to be amplified because when you live in the public eye, the amount of projection that's put onto you, the amount of dissonance really there is between who you 
know yourself to be and who the world believes yourself to be can create all sorts of you know, psychological issues, not least of which is a disconnect really from what your most fundamental needs are. And you can mistake you know, adoration for love. You can mistake uh, somebody being a fan from them actually knowing you for who you really are. And, and so I think that the psychology of, of being in the public eye and, and the psychology of, of having to cope with the multiple pressures that that brings with it is, is a complex phenomenon. And if you imagine the ego a bit like a balloon, the more you pump it full of air, the more vulnerable it becomes to popping. And, and that's how you can imagine what it's like to, to be a celebrity living in the public eye. You know, you're pumped full of this adoration and you're pumped full of this this uh, projection, all the projections that people put onto you, and, and which of course makes you extraordinarily vulnerable. Considering Cruz has been acting since a teenager, there is still substantial positive support from fellow cast members over the years surrounding the actor. Everyone talks about how focused Tom Cruise is. Yeah. I mean, is he a machine? When, I mean, now you know him as a man I mean, as well. He's just such a force of nature. He's such a dynamic personality. He's just a wonderful guy as well. And, and we had a laugh, you know, I think everyone talks about how hardworking and folks he is, but he's really fun as well, and, you know, he's so sweet. He was sort of deliciously like himself and deliciously like he's been in the films that I've so loved watching him in, you know. He, he, you see the guy, you meet the guy who's created all those wonderful, iconic characters, and, and, and that's so exciting because he sort of delivers that. But then what did surprise me, I suppose, is that you can talk so openly with him. When you ask Tom a direct question, you get a direct answer, and it's a, it's a lovely quality, and I, you know, I love Thank him for that. Yeah. Thank you very much. His attention to detail is something that's unparalleled, and there's, you know, this, this career that he has in these movies, they don't happen by accident. It, it comes from an, an immense amount of work and effort, and also love. I mean, Tom loves making movies. He really loves entertaining audiences, and, and it shows. Recently, director Joseph Kaczynski spoke about Tom's absolute professionalism on Top Gun Maverick. He knows every job on the set because he's so curious and was, as a young actor, you know, yeah. interested in learning every department's function. There is always a very collaborative conversation where you're just pushing every scene, every shot, mm -hmm. every idea in the film to its Max and you know Tom will say I've made every mistake I don't want to make those again it's an incredible relationship for director you know Tom could direct if he wanted to but he loves that collaboration he loves the push and pull of that creative relationship Kaczynski explains how Cruz has never taken a day for granted or rested on his laurels and is forever looking forward to the next thing and how he can do it better than himself and anyone else before him. Cruz is consistently only appearing in big screen projects. This keeps him as a movie exclusive actor, which is becoming harder and harder to be these days. I don't know if, you see, the thing about Tom Cruise is that he, he cares so much about his, the audience, the audience's kind of response. He's, a commi he's so committed to making films, do you know what I mean? That he will literally put his life on the line in order to get it done or to deliver, deliver something which no one else does, you know? I care about my job and I care about the audience and I care about their experience, but I don't know if I care that much. <laughs> it is too dangerous. And I, I, I talked to him about it, and we all say it. Me and Rebecca both have conversations like, are you sure you want to do this? But this is an age when you can do anything on screen, anything with CG. You can make fantastic environments and creatures and things happen that the human body can't do. But when you watch that, you have the subconscious knowledge that it isn't real, you know. You suspend your disbelief willingly and you enjoy it, but it's not real. Tom realized that if you actually do it, there's a degree of subconscious thrill there which is the feeling that this is real. <laughs> I just I enjoy what I do, and uh, you know, I'm always looking for something different. And I think being someone who is at my, the outside, I'm sorry. What's your name? Yeah, 
you know, I, I enjoy what I do, and that's that's the fun of it for me. And, and to have the opportunities that I have, something that is incredibly uh, rare and special, and it's something I've always felt I don't want to take advantage of. It. I want to keep pushing myself, and I'm I'm, I'm interested in growing, and I'm, I'm interested in being diverse. And, and taking every opportunity that I can to try to achieve that. Thank you. It's easy to get lost in the screen when witnessing the star in character. But suppose you keep in mind the production behind the films. In that case, you can begin to consider the level of athletic ability, training, and focus it takes to pull off these terrifying and death-defying performances. This is only a reminder of how hardworking he is as an actor, constantly improving his craft and amplifying his dedication to his work. At the core, Cruz runs his career as a business and he knows that he is the product. Looking back, his career and private life have been diverse, vertiginous, and full of challenges. However, none of it got in the way of filmmaking. Whether it was a romantic lead or an action character, Tom Cruise has always nailed it and greatly impacted pop culture. talk to you about um, coming back to London and being yeah. back here because do you ever tire of it coming here and seeing the crowds here? No, I never do. Now I remember when I first came to London back in... <laughs> wow! <laughs> first came back uh, to London in 83 and actually I would come here <laughs> and to see movies here uh, and now to have these events it's, it's always very special and it means a lot to me. It was the reason that by the late 1980s, Tom Cruise was the first choice of every producer in Hollywood for almost a decade, still looking every inch of the Hollywood heartthrob. Despite a humble beginning and with exceptional performances, Tom Cruise has worked his way up and made a place for himself as one of the most well-recognized actors in Hollywood. As a public figure, Cruz has been cited as one of the most influential and powerful people in the entertainment industry. No, it isn't human. Yeah. We all know he isn't, so I embrace him doing it. That's why we love the films. It's the fast, the quick, the pace. His motorbike ride through Paris is bloody insane. We're talking about the helicopter thing, which is visibly very scary because it's high. But if you look at his moves on a motorbike, when he goes through the Trocadero and through every little alleyway in Paris, that's him. It's insane. My bike, that's not me. I'm drinking coffee somewhere. He's the one who demands that level of intensity with the action. He's the one who, you know, insists on being in the car, which means that the rest of us all have to be in the car, which means that, you know, the action is more uh, kinetic for the audience. So he loves it, whether it's jumping out of planes or riding motorcycles or driving fast cars or fights, you know, he loves being at the center of the action. So he, he quite likes it when it gets a little a little dangerous. So were there any points on set where somebody came to the catering table and went, oh my God, I think I've just broken Tom Cruise? <laughs> like I say, that guy was me. Tom Cruise nearly broke me twice. Cruise recently formed a master plan to complete one of his most iconic and daring stunts for his new film, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. According to the Hollywood actor, every stunt aspect had to be meticulously planned. The scene will involve the 60-year-old driving a motorcycle at speed off a cliff where he appears to free fall through the air. The actor undertook one year of advanced skydiving training, base training, and canopy skills, completed over 500 skydives and 13,000 motocross jumps in preparation. It has been hailed as the most incredible stunt in cinema history. I saw a canopy.
canopy. I saw a canopy. <laughs> it's hard to imagine pulling off a more difficult stunt than this one. But if there's one person to find a way, it'd be Hollywood action hero, Tom Cruise. <laughs>